All right. So, um, yeah, let's get started. So, well, first of all, I just want to let you, I, I really do enjoy the, the content that you have. I mean, it's, it's it's really out there. So I'm not really 100% sure of, of everything myself, but um, but uh, it's good to meet people with with these experiences because um, you know I have somewhat similar, but um, I can't really put them in words. So I put them in music. So that's that's how I that's how I interpret what I'm going through with all this stuff. But um, yeah. Okay. So so let let's let's start with this. Like, um, so when you let's go be, real way back, right? So when you were your your first recollection, you know, as a child, like looking out into this environment into this life i mean did you notice anything that stuck out to you as odd you know was it was it like were, were you one of those people who just tried to fit into the the crowd and you know or was there something that kind of struck you and and gave you a like what's going on in this, this existence of mine you know well i was always very out there as a kid, right? So I, th there was never a time where I actually tried to fit in, uh, and 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 I couldn't even if I tried because it, it would be, I would be pretending. So mm -hmm. my 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 upbringing was vastly different from a lot of other people's upbringing because at a at a young age, instead of focusing on the materialistic things that you know parents entice their children to do. I was like very young, seven and probably even younger, to be honest with you. But th this is just well, the memories that I have so far. First of all, when I was a, when I was a kid, I already knew that this was my last time here. I, I've mm -hmm. had what you would classify as um, out of body experiences, but I had no idea that that's what was happening at the time. I had sleep paralysis at, as a kid um, and growing up. Um, my uncle in particular, and also my father's side, right? Th those two mm -hmm. in particular were also helping me at a young child to keep the dormant abilities, I call them dormant abilities, activated and awakened, right? And they were so mm -hmm. much awakened as a child, so much so that the, we, we were actually pulling in what you would say or opening up dimensional spaces that, that one kids talk about, um, you know, a, uh, a being in the room or, you know, the boogeyman in the closet and stuff like that, oh, that, that, yeah. that, that was actually, we were actually materializing or opening up dimensional spaces for those beings to be presented in the physical realm at the time, even so much so when my, where my mother didn't believe us at the time. And I remember that she was, uh, we all ran into it. We, we all ran into her, uh, her, her, uh, bedroom. And we're like, you, we, the beings here again, you know, we're all freaked out and scared and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she, the, she didn't believe us, but she opened up the, she opened up her, uh, door to look down the hallway uh, and she, she oh. saw exactly what the being that we, we were talking about. And she slammed that door, sh uh, shut so fast and put like, you know, put the dresser. She's like, help me really quick. Put the <laughs> dresser. Like, so we, so as a child, my upbringing it's not, it's not typical at all. Um, and even so much so that, that I was being, uh, I would sit in a room sometimes like, you know, one, two hours focusing on one thing, whether if that is to put out a candle or to learning how to read people's frequent, their energy, seeing it, what people call ores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that this was, was at seven, like seven or eight. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. Did, yes. Did it come natural? In other words, like you weren't, you, you didn't read it in a book. It came natural to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it came natural with also, with also, uh, my uncle mm -hmm. pushing those to be even more like to, to push them further. Um, mm -hmm. so as, as a kid where, where typically people would play video games, I was sitting in a room, staring at a candle, trying to put it out. I haven't really shared a lot of details with that, mm -hmm. with my my childhood growing up just because I, I I don't really think it's relevant to go into all the details of things other than all all of the things that are unseen to the physical eyes as a child I was seeing them physically and not only physically it, I was 
those beings were presenting themselves physically in the physical realm, even so much so that my friends as a child could see them and also my parents could see them as well. Um, wow. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, I mean, for me, like even as a kid, I, I, I never watched sci-fi movies. I never really cared for, you know, all the ET stuff or anything like that. But for some reason, I remember going to a garage sale with my, with my family and like in a stack of books, like, you know, I must've been like seven years old or something. And for some reason, seven years old, like hits, hits me the most because I, I hear a lot of stories about that range, you know, that time in your, and the kid's life between, I guess, maybe four to seven. And um, I remember rummaging through a boxes of books that were like being sold for a dollar. And the one that I picked out was all about UFOs, you know, and I go, I want this book. And I'm going, I don't have any idea what, why, but I have this interest in, you know, ETs and other beings and stuff like that. And, and meanwhile, I, I even to myself, I'm going, why, why would I have an interest in this? You know, but it, I, it's, it's like innate. So, um, you know, that, that's why I can understand your point of view as a kid. It's like, we, we all have that ability to experience these things, but um, maybe because of our environment and how we've been um, adapted not to, um, it's just so hard to, to realize that it is normal, you know, so. Um, yeah, because that's, that's the true, that's the true universe, the, 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 the true nature of reality that we, we all have a very, e it's very easy to tap into as a kid, because you're fresh from the other side. So mm -hmm. if they are not shut down through, because also like the, how, like, t the, like how much um, poisons do they inject into the child when it's just born? So also based on many different factors will, will um, contribute to the, how quick these, what I call dormant abilities, ability, abilities get shut down. Now, if you have someone that is supported in that process as a child, then those things remain on unless the child chooses to shut them down and then mm -hmm. et cetera, you know, and like yeah. all of these ETs, extraterrestrials, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're all real. They, they, I've been in contact with so many different beings. Some of them look human, non-humanoid, what you would call ET grays. Mm -hmm. They're all, all of them are here. And all of them, when you tap into that dimensional space, you 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 could see them, because they're they're not necessarily in the physical realm because they're 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 in another dimensional space just out of our our view of seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah. why why do you think why do you think people are not open to the concept of is their life? out of this earth i mean there are so many people who just you know they still scoff at it even after after all these reports and year after year you just even okay so you see something in the sky and then even the navy sees something in the sky, but still even if you provide evidence of something there's so many people who just kind of chuckle at it you know how, how do you what do you think about that like why people are just not uh, um open to this other this other realm or this other idea people have shut themselves down so dramatically and put themselves into such a let pretty much a coma that mm -hmm. it's how do you tell how do you tell a blind person what the color blue looks like right right that's true so a lot of these people are blind and no matter how much you try to explain to them what the color blue looks like or what the other side really is, they won't actually see it until they pretty much go back to their, to their true state. I mean, not everybody is blind forever. They, they can see again, you mm -hmm. know, and they can That's see that. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. can see the truth for, for what it is, but a lot of people don't want to even put in the work in order to do that because of fear typically mm -hmm. now it's not necessarily when you look at earth too right mm -hmm. 
right. and ETs and space and stuff like that. That's not actually how it is. That's not how it works. It, the, you need to think of this place as a realm, not earth. And mm -hmm. when you, when you understand that this is a realm with also multidimensional spaces within this realm, you, you'll, you'll begin to view it as all of these beings are within this realm, but they're just in another dimensional space. You could call it the multiverse, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that they are in space and coming in to this realm. They are just outside of this frequency that we are within that when you take the soul out of the body, you can access all of the dimensional spaces, which then access and contact all of these beings. So when you start to see them or see glimpses of different beings, whether if that's in a ship or in the house, you are seeing that blending effect of, of coming into this, this dimensional space, this realm from theirs. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. I get that. Okay. Because it is physical over there. When you die or cross over, you don't have to die to do this, but when you do leave the body and your soul leaves the body, most of these beings are operating in their soul body, which is an, it's uncorruptible. Their body is uncorruptible. Their vision is uncorruptible. They have, they have access to all things. And there is a density there as well. You, the, the body that you operate, that soul body, your essence is physical. It's more physical and more dense than the physical body that you're using right now because you have access to all of it. You, it's almost like if we are, we, we think that we're dense, we think that we're physical and all these things, but we're only operating at a very limited band of energy and frequency in, in, in distorted energy and frequency and we're cut off from a lot of things. Now, when you exit the body and you access these dimensional spaces, you are accessing and getting more of I'll just say the light spectrum into your body that it's more real than what it could ever be here. And it's, it's also all the pleasures of physicality with no limitations at the same time, because what you think you can manifest there and where you want to travel, you could go there. Okay. So that's a good point. Cause that's actually something I, I, I had a question for you. So, but can you do those things in physical? Like, could you actually, experience what you experience out of body in body is that is that even possible right now or is it just that we're not capable of doing that because our bodies are not fit uh you know what i mean biologically and uh, all the reasons really to experience all those things that that will we'll, i know you meant you call it like um out you know um out there it's not really out there but do you think we could do it in our physical as well? Or do we always have to be in that, that um, as you call it, out of body? You know, it's a, called an out of body experience, but could we do it in the physical? Or is this not possible right now in, the, in this time? And now I'm going to answer that in, well, pretty much one way, but two ways. Um, yes, it is 100% possible to do this within the physical body. Now I say, yes, it's 100%, but I, I'm, I'm not doing that. So it, I typically like to speak of direct experience, but mm -hmm. it, it 100% you can, like I said, all this is, is possible. All this is possible when you take the soul out, but also accessing this with the physical body. I haven't done it yet and I don't know how to do it yet. I mean, I've, I've done it to a limited degree when I was a child, but I don't even know how I was doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Now, now my, my thing on this is to be able to do it within the physical body, the, all of the distortions, right? have to be gone. All, all of the, what people call, you know, the, the, even DNA is, is a distortion of, of the true, true nature of who we are on, on the other side, you don't really have DNA. You are just pure soul energy essence. Your essence is pure. And there's no, there's none of these chakras or blocks or DNA. It's just your pure self. So I'm going to try to explain it with the distorted DNA version, but if the DNA, what they call junk DNA, if all those things were act active and all those mm -hmm. dormant abilities were turning on, your your body is can 
hold and maintain all of the things on the other side that are capable on the other side can be done with the physical body. But the physical body is so crippled at the moment where it's like, it, it's, it's near impossible. I mean, I, I haven't figured out how to do it as a way I do out of body experiences. But is it possible? Yes. How do you do it? A massive, there has to be such a massive energy surge within the body that pretty much rips out any blocks or distortions that is holding it back mm. from accessing the places that it has the right to access. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a big, that's a big feat right there. Cause yeah, I mean, like it, the, oh. yeah, because then you, you, you essentially, because if, if that was capable with the physical body and if a person was doing that, then they would pretty much be the Messiah. That's what people would, people would, uh, you know, try to look at them as, but really it's, it's an ability that every single soul has and can do. Um, but I'm just not sure how that's, how that's possible yet anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that's what I was going to say. You, you were exactly uh, mentioned. It's like you have to be a master, a master of your mind and body, right? You have to just be completely in mastery of everything um, within and out. It's, um, I mean, it's hard enough just going day by day without some, something like, you know, pain in your leg or, you know, you know, a headache or something like that. I can't imagine do trying to do something with, with using so much energy. It's just, um, I mean, a better way, so a better way to also explain it too, right? The, the the way that it would be possible to do it in the body, right, is right now when you take the soul out, like I said, you have no limitations. Whatever you think of and whatever you want to do is instant. It's just there. There's no delay of your of your soul expression coming into that soul body. It's just instantly there. You could change the way you look instantly. I remember changing the way I look on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. this is this is also where you get people that are um what you call it like you know a grandmother that's died in their 80s and then when you people have a near-death experience they see her in a prime of her life she's she looks beautiful mm -hmm. you, you could change mm -hmm. the way you look now the soul is connected through the central nervous system and also all the meridian system and stuff like that but the the body has such a dis, a distortion where there's a it's almost like a um a speed limit, right? It's a, it's a, it's a limiter of mm -hmm. how much this soul can truly fuse into the physical body because if the soul was 100% fused into the central nervous system and the meridian system, and there was no distortions or blocks on the soul fully connecting mm -hmm. with the body, then the body would have no choice, but to, to do as the soul wills, because you're you, at the end of the day, your body is, is frequency and sound, which creates right. density. And the, like I said before, like your soul is more dense than your physical body when you do have the experience of leaving the body. So if the limiters were off and that soul was fully expressing its true essence, then yeah, the, the body would have no choice but to do as the soul wills. You know, that section right there, you, you, you'd have to listen to that part over again just to get it. I mean, I get it, but I have to, I would list, have to listen to that like a couple of times to totally understand. But um, yeah. It, it, does it, does it make sense? Cause I'm trying to, oh, yeah. yeah. It makes, you know what? It makes sense internally, but when, when you have words, like, you know, you just, you kind of put pictures to it or something like that. And it's not, it's not an imagery thing, actually. It's just more of a inform, you know, you just get that information and you're like, oh yeah, that makes that, that makes sense. Like you don't have to analyze it. It's just like, oh yeah what you just told me, I, I get it, but I, I wouldn't be able to relay it to somebody that, you know, I wouldn't be able to relate in words exactly, but you did a very good job doing that. Um, yeah, that, uh, that, that's also, that's also, I think that people don't under understand as well. I mean, th this is slightly off topic, but the, to try to put it in words where it be, because none of this, everything that I'm saying, if it's not said in a certain way where it actually is understandable based off the consciousness of the individual that's listening to it, then there's no point in even saying it really, because it's not really right. going to be heard. So it's Absolutely. like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, 
to explain it in certain ways, I really want to make sure that I explain it properly for you to understand it, because that's, that's really the main point of it, right? Yeah, well, I think, um, I think, like you said, it's if, if you don't believe in something, that's the first barrier, right? Even if you, you explain it to me in the most, the, the most detailed way, if I, if I just don't get it, I probably will say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll just move on, go to back to my 3D life, you know, go watch some TV or something where it's easy to comprehend. But yeah, I think the the, the uh, person who is giving the information and the receiver, absolutely, I think have to be on the same page in order to even be talking, I guess. Yeah. You know, but um. Some people are underneath the misconception that the universe dictates consciousness. And when you view it that way, you become a soul that is, is not the fullest expression of the beginning of all things, which is not true. Because you as a soul, you're infinite, you're eternal, and you have the, the will to do as you wish on the other side. So the really how it is, is consciousness dictates the universe because you as a soul are the dictator of your own creation. It's how it works on the other side. You create through your thoughts, you create through your emotions, you create dimensional spaces, you create realms and constructs. All these things are created from your soul. We are all part of the beginning of all things. That void, the black space, the Godhead, whatever, whatever religious beliefs or beliefs you hold, we are that. We are the consciousness of the universe. We, we dictate the universe. Now that is an unbreakable and unchangeable truth, regardless of how you feel or your perceptions or opinions that will never change. Because when you cross over to the other side, you will see that your soul is eternal, you live on forever, and you have the ability to create that which you want to experience the most. So your consciousness, you as a soul are the dictator of the universe. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so, um, boy, okay, let me, we we can, it's like the, the, the questions are like sp spreading wide here. <laughs> I want to make sure we keep on the, so, cause you, you mentioned something about you being, okay, uh, you know, that the soul is, is, is eternal. Um, there's no death. So do you, I mean, this has been spoken about through what, in um, other conversations everywhere. I mean, is the reason why um, people fear death is because is because they've been taught that it's uh, I mean, I mean, why why do you think people fear death? Because it's unknown. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. You know. Well, what is the number one way to control a soul? It's through fear. fear. Yeah. Yeah. So because your soul, one, who, who you really are is the beginning of all things. Every single one of us are. And we have, we all have the same abilities to express ourselves in whatever way we choose to express ourselves, watch there, therefore is create what we want to create based off what we choose to experience the most. Now, when, when, if you want to control a soul within this realm, the best way to do it is put them in fear. Because if, and especially fear of something that does not exist, you, you mm. put them in fear of death. What does death mean? It's the opposite of what I just told you. It's the universe dictates consciousness, meaning right. you will eventually die and you will never exist when you die. There's never, there's no eternity for you. You know, it goes and it's, it's the exact opposite of what I'm saying. Right. Now, when, yeah. once souls understand that there is no such thing as death and you do live on forever, and you, you, you've had so many experiences that those memories do return back to you, especially when you're on the other side or access it as well through an mm -hmm. out-of-body state. Yeah. When a soul becomes fearless, you are an uncontrollable soul. And their main agenda here is to, is to control the individual soul, right? Through mm -hmm. beliefs and their fear. So yeah. your, your consciousness does exist outside of the body you, you you never die that's the biggest myth and bullshit that has ever been perpetrated on individuals here 
that there's death mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. doesn't exist. Or let's let's uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about something that I saw in one of your recent videos, and you you called it the void, right? You talked about the void. Um, would you say that the true nature of reality is what the void holds? So the void is the beginning of all things. It's the, it's the be beginning isn't really, I, I don't have a word to describe it besides the beginning, because, you know, you, you talk about a beginning that also means that it, it had a start, but this never had, it, it just, it is the, the void, the black space is, is a place that has always been mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. That is the. I'll just I'll just use the word beginning. All right, that is the beginning of all things. It's the it's it's black. A lot of people when they when they think of uh, going back to the beginning of all things, they think of uh, light and stuff. Mm. It's Let it's there not, be light. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there, mm -hmm. but 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 it's but it's not. And I mean that that's actually a good point, right? Let there be light, because that, that's what the Bible said, you know. Mm -hmm. So even the Bible is even telling you for people that are religious and they need to view it from that lens, right? Mm -hmm. Even in the beginning of all things, when God created, it, it was in the void, the blackness, and then mm -hmm. from the blackness of creating this realm, He said, "Let there be light," and then light was secondary. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So yeah. all light is birthed from that black space. The universe of light came from the black space. It's black. The void is black because it holds all the color. It holds everything. Mm. All right. Okay. So, yeah. so it is when you're on the other side, when you want to create realms, dimensional spaces, constructs, the void is, is the thing that is outside of all realms, all dimensional spaces and constructs. But when you want to create something for your soul to experience in, like the universe of light, you create it from that space and you enter the realm that you've created to experience mm -hmm. that what you want to experience. Okay. This realm that we're in is one out of many based off of individual souls creating their own self-expression that, that could also be experienced. But this is also the only realm where you forget who you are as well. Mm. When, when you're on the other side, you don't enter other realms and dimensional spaces in for in forgetting. You remember exactly who you are, everything, and it's and it's just and when you enter it, you pop out. You don't need to die. It's just a you, you're in full control, all knowing on the other side. This is the only realm that does not do that, all right? Because we, we on the other side, we it's almost like experiencing if you. Well, it's not if we are eternal. So because we are eternal, it's almost like we also could experience whatever it is that we want, whatever it is that we want to create, including this. You, know? you, you have, op, you know, like a eternity to create everything, right? It just yeah, keeps pretty going much. and going, going. So, uh, you know, so this kind of relates to, do you think that that is what people might call heaven? Not necessarily, no. It's even outside of heaven. Heaven is a, um, um, it is a, another, it's, it's not this realm, but heaven is a, we'll just call it because people call it fifth density, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, we'll just call it, it's the fifth density realm. That's what heaven is. The black space is even outside of heaven. It's, it's, yeah, he, the black space created heaven, if that makes sense, because heaven is a realm. So the the black space, the void, is kind of like the root. Would you say? Of all, it's yeah, it's the root, the root of mm -hmm. all things. It's even the creation of heaven itself. So what about therefore the creation of a of a hell? Do Do you think that a, all comes know? from there? All comes from there. So but do you think the people create their own versions of a heaven of heaven and hell? Like do you? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, some, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the um um p the because. Because whatever you think of there, right, is mm -hmm. instantly manifested. So everybody's going to have their slightly different version of heaven. Everybody's going to have their slightly different version of hell. Now, it's not necessarily the all, all, all exists, heaven and hell and the in between all exist due to that black space, the beginning of all things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I also want to say because it's not necessarily 
like, you know, you, you talk about hell and evil and all those things and eternal or whatever, th th yeah. that doesn't exist either because there is no judgment on the other side. So it's not like, you know, you're getting judged for what you do here because you're, you are the only judger when you leave, you judge yourself. That's it. You, the, mm. No one's there to judge you because you cannot have unconditional love with a judgment. And on the other side, it is, it is, you, you do not judge others for expressing their fullest expression of consciousness and individuality because there's no, there's no limitation on you. Just like you cannot have, you cannot have ultimate expression of freedom with, with a limitation. And, it, and, and if you are the dictator of the universe, your consciousness, then you are not limited to do as you wish. And therefore you cannot be judged for it. Mm. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely um, a, lot, a lot of information to, to, to think about. Um, well, l let me ask you something. You mentioned while we were talking before, you, you said that you, you could see loved ones, uh, the way that they, sometimes they're younger, you know, like you'll see um, someone who passed who looks uh, much younger than ha when they passed, you know? So... You, do you remember mentioning that earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So do you think that's something that, why do you think they do that? Is that something their choice or something that, um, is there a, is there a, an age that, that they, that these beings go or these souls go to, because it's like the, the, the most, I don't know, it's the most uh, ideal age for the, those who pass. Like, what do you think is, is that about? So a, a lot of people, when they look at the age, now a lot of people when they cross over <clears throat> aren't necessarily going back to the black space. And it's not necessarily because they don't want to, but typically they're going to what, what people call heaven, the fifth realm or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and there, in that realm, the, uh, the, the age, the ideal or the blueprint age is, is pretty much almost mid twenties early thirties. All right. Mm, so that's, okay. so that's typically what people like the, the, that their bodies are in the prime of their life. Essentially. That's the mm -hmm. blueprint of that realm of what people okay. call heaven. It's the, the body is uncorruptible. When, when people talk about the, you know, 30 years old, they're talking about the, the heavenly realms. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Cause which, I, I mean, which is a place, I mean, which is a place uh -huh. that a lot of people go. It's not, you know, it's a, it's a place that a lot of people experience when they do cross over and a lot of people just stay there for a very, very long time, but it's not the eternal of all things. It, like I said, it's the black space. And then you are even free from that heavenly realm to go off to the great infinite beyond and also create your own heaven mm. or hell. <laughs> it's up to you. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing because I I have had dreams of you know seeing relatives who pass and I and they they're always much younger, always like they're they have the most beautiful skin, their hair and their their you know their body they're they're just like revived, you know. And I see that and I'm going, oh my gosh, they're they're completely like happy, you know, in in their in their form. So I never see them in the, in an older age. It's just, it's just something I've always you know, been curious about, but um, that, that answers some questions that. Yeah. Um, because you would have, when you are there, like I said before, there's no limitation placed on you. So you, you are always in a, in a state of, of joy hmm. because what, what you want to do, you, you could do there. There's no governing body of dictating what your soul could do to express itself in its fullest and to enjoy itself. Yeah. So you, you're going to have, when you see people from the heavenly realms, you're, you're going to have individuals that are always pure, happy in the prime of their life, because why wouldn't you want to experience that essentially? Right. Exactly. <laughs> after ex what we've experienced here right yeah um so this this question came up um i was thinking about because you had also mentioned it before so 
you know, sometimes you have, um, when you dream, you have nightmares and you have just pleasant dreams and so forth. So when you go and have your out of body experiences, let's, so let's say you had a bad day or something, right? Did, did the experiences, you know, you were angry or you were frustrated that, that day, and then you go to, you go to sleep and then you have the out of body experience. Do those energies, um, reflect in that, that, time that you travel in, in, in that evening, or is, can you separate that? Uh, I'm not religious, but this is where it goes into biblical things. The mm -hmm. spoken word is so important. It's in all, also the, your thoughts is a pretty much a spoken word because you, what you speak on the other mm -hmm. side, you are literally creating that, what you speak. And it's mm -hmm. no different here. We just cannot mm -hmm. see it because we're in time. But when you pop out of the body, you are outside of time. So you could view and experience what you have spoken about yesterday, two years ago. You know, the, all, all is it all is available to you. Like there's literally instantaneously. No, exactly. So you could access out of that, out of the time that we're in now. So it's all available to you. That's including accessing the true nature of reality. What 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 I've uh, explained thus far, and also. Mm -hmm answering your question with the, uh, if you're having a bad day, can you experience that? The answer is yes.